¿Cómo están? Buenas tardes, eh, buenos días en Australia. Martín, ¿cómo estás? Buenos días, ¿cómo te va Eduardo? Buenas tardes para vos. Bien, muy bien. Eh, le estaba comentando a Martín que venía corriendo porque después de casi un año no había visitado la, la maqueta donde nos juntamos. No es propiamente un club ni nada, es, es la, la maqueta de, de un compañero y hoy finalmente mi hijo y, y yo pudimos estar ahí un rato. La verdad, de eh, algo bien, pero andaba corriendo y se me había olvidado que teníamos esto, entonces todo el día andaba corriendo, se me complicó, pero bueno, ya estamos aquí. Y, y tú, Martín, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo has estado? ¿Qué me cuentas allá? Bien, bien, todo tranquilo. Acá por primera vez o por segunda vez en lockdown, por el, o el encerramiento por el COVID en Ajá. Australia, en el estado donde vivo. O sea, subieron casos diarios de... de 3, 4 por día, 800, y, y de, se, se cerraron todo Sydney y todo alrededor, así que eh, no, no acostumbrado a estar encerrado, pero bueno, <ríe> sobreviviendo. Y, y acá desgraciadamente, digo, la comparación es diferente, tú tenías 800, acá teníamos creo 800 en una delegación, a nivel, <ríe> nos, a nivel nacional nos fuimos creo que a 20 mil casos eh, al día en contagios, y eh, igual todo. Eh, no, hay, no van a cerrar la economía ni nada, pero vamos a, a continuar y pues, hay que seguirse cuidando del cubrebocas y todo esto, entonces no, no, va, no va a cambiar mucho. Pero sí, sí bueno, el consejo para todos los que nos ven en cualquier parte del mundo, pues bueno, no se, no se, no se descuiden, síganse cuidando, aunque estén vacunados. A mucha gente que conozco les ha dado, eh, el daño es menor con la vacuna, no se van a hospitalización. Y también he conocido casos que no se quisieron vacunar y sí llegaron a hospitalización y, y, y casos graves, ¿no? En alguno. Pero bueno, eso es otro tema drástico de, de, del, del mundo. Eh, oye, entonces, ¿y ustedes allá cómo lo están viviendo, eh, Martín? Ah, bien, 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 tranquilo. O sea, en el área donde vivo yo no, no hay casos. Uh, o sea, esto es más que nada Sydney y un poco de New South Wales regional, que es el estado. Eh, pero bueno, decidieron cerrar, así que bueno, el trabajo me mandaron a trabajar desde casa hace ya cuatro semanas y suspendieron todas las actividades prácticamente, o sea, no nos podemos mover un radio de cinco kilómetros, ir al supermercado una sola persona y solamente salir una hora, dos horas de ejercicio y ya está. Pues, <ríe> eh, ayuda, ayuda al hobby. <risa> sí, dando duro. El, el año pasado mucha gente decía eso en los clubs de, de Estados Unidos que, que no había problemas, o sea, siempre hay algún proyecto o algo que terminar, oh. algún carro que arreglar y pues bueno, cada quien trata de sobrevivir como, como se puede y sí. pues bueno, vamos a llevar esto lo mejor posible Seguro, seguro. Oye, por otro lado, eh, estaba pensando hace un par de meses platicamos con nuestros amigos de Tren Rodante Correcto eh, Obviamente ellos se dedican mucho a la parte en, en español totalmente, el, trenes argentinos y por ahí de repente meten algo europeo. Y el día de hoy eh, vamos a ver, la pues podemos decir contraparte, en el sentido que los trenes son totalmente americanos. Y, uh -huh. y empezó como una revista, sí. luego se expandió. Tenemos ya uh, series de videos, este, clínicas y, y, y muchas otras cosas eh, que realmente sirven a mí en lo personal me han ayudado. Cuando mm. empecé en el hobby, pues no hay mucho donde encontrar. En YouTube hay muchos comentarios en inglés. Pero alguna revista dedicada o algún canal dedicado. Eh, incluso hay un programa mensual donde sale el famoso Ken Patterson. Muchas mucho de las que, cosas que he tratado de aprender, pues las, las, las he copiado de él y, y realmente tratas de pulirlo. Pero... Detrás de todo esto siempre hay un, un editor en jefe, es, quien es el, el que, digamos, coordina todo este, toda esta idea y, y hoy nos, nos complace el que esté con nosotros para platicar un poco cómo se creó, dónde está y hacia dónde vamos. Mm. Y me estoy refiriendo a la revista MRH, Model Railroad Hobbit Magazine, y estamos hablando del editor en jefe, eh, Joe Fugate, eh, que ahorita vamos a, a darle la bienvenida. Déjame ver si ya está por aquí. Sí, para mí, te, te comento, es uno de los, sin falta de respeto a nadie, de los próceres del modelismo. O sea, yo empecé con, 
con sus videos en DVD en su layout cuando hizo su seis, seis DVD sacó uh -huh. eh, el, quise imitar el layout en forma de hongo, <risa> pero no me salió. Y yo lo considero uno de los, realmente uno de los procesos del ferromodelismo en general, con técnicas que hace 15 años eran avanzadas y el tiempo y la dedicación que le puso al hobby y cómo lo hace crecer. Es una, una de las personas que ilumina el ferromodelismo realmente. Y, y sobre todo técnicas, en, en su revista tú puedes mandar eh, algunos artículos, los publicas, haces preguntas. Creo que eso es lo importante. Eh, obviamente es en inglés, pero incluso aunque tú no sepas leer o hablar bien el inglés, tú puedes leer la revista o ver un video y entiendes. Hay, hay procesos que los explican muy bien. El, el show de Ken Patterson lo ponen en fotografías y cuando hace una escenografía vas viendo y vas viendo lo que hace. Cuando alguien hace un weathering lo puedes ver. Y obviamente eh, es una fuente de inspiración y de compras. Hay, hay muchos proveedores que tú no conoces que se, que se anuncian en la revista y es importante eh, que los veas en, en un video. Por ayer un día puse dónde comprar trenes. Sí. La MRH tiene un catálogo muy grande de proveedores. que Entonces se lo recomendamos a todos. Eh, creo que entregas a nivel mundial y, y muchas veces... Cosas que no sabes quién las hace, en esta revista puedes encontrar varios proveedores. Sí, sí, sí. A, aparte, es, 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 es accesible, el precio es bueno, o sea, es internacional, o sea, obviamente hacer por internet, ¿no? Pero, sí. o sea, la, la, la mística que ha creado esta revista y, y la era digital, creo uh -huh. que es, es, es el mejor producto de la era digital. Y después tiene su show de televisión de Train Master TV también, ¿no? o sea, maestros en, de trenes en TV, sería. Sí, y, y, y creo que la inscripción es muy barata, ahorita no, le vamos a preguntar a George. No, 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 si no, si mal no recuerdo. Y, Así es. Y, eh, este, y el formato, el formato, eh, y tiene doble edición, la, la gratuita y la Así que es. se paga. Así, Así que es. Bueno, Así bueno, es. le podemos preguntar a él que nos explique. <ríe> Perfecto. <ríe> Pues bueno, bienvenidos a, a las personas que estamos viendo. Sabemos que luego se complica por los horarios. Ya saben que este video es, queda en el streaming, tanto en el canal de Union Pacific y el de YouTube, eh, de Just for Front Trains. Eh, ahí, ahí, ahí vamos, están. Pero demos la bienvenida. Vamos a ver a Joe Fugate. Hello, Joe. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing very good. Martín, ¿te quieres presentar? Bien. Yeah. Um... Hello, Joe. Good morning here from Australia. Um, I'm Martin, and I was saying uh, to Eduardo and to everyone here, you are one of my heroes. I started Model Train Sex to you and your DVD collection, you know, from your Southern Pacific layout, the Mushroom one. <laughs> yes. yes, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy, very glad to, to have, uh, have the chance to talk with you this morning, or oh, this, this afternoon for you. Yes, yes. Well, uh, you know, it's all different times all around the world. And uh, it's interesting as you bring that up. When I look at uh, Model Railroad Hobbyists, uh, you know, we, we have through Google Analytics the ability to see who visits our site regularly. And 30% of the people who visit our website are not from the United States. Yeah. <laughs> México, México es uno, México es uno. Eh, yep. Acaba de decir Joe Fuguet algo muy importante: 30% de las personas que visitan el, el site de MRH no son de Estados Unidos. Y le digo, México es uno, <laughs> yo me incluyo, estoy seguro que muchos compañeros en Argentina y en otros lugares lo visitan. Y, y Martín le acaba de decir que, bueno, es una de las inspiraciones principales para él y al principio lo comentamos. Eh, si quieres, Martín, tú empiezas con las preguntas de, ya sabes, normales, quién es Joe Fuguet y todo eso, y, y, y nos vamos yeah. como siempre. Bien. Ok, le voy a preguntar sobre su vida y cómo empezó en el hobby y toda okay. esa historia. Um, Joe, the first question we have for you is very simple. Your introduction into the into the hobby, uh, how how you started, um, just yeah, a brief description of your life in, in the model regular, and any person. I, I know you have a very interesting story. Um, I mean, follow your your broadcast or when you participate in, in a few. Uh, but yeah. An introduction to, to the hobby first could be good for us. Okay. Well, I actually grew up in Southern Oregon in the United States, um, right next to the Southern Pacific Siskiyou line, which um, mm -hmm. although it's a branch line, it actually used to be the main line uh, back, 
uh, when the Southern Pacific first went into Oregon, and then in the late 20s, they built the, the Willamette Pass route. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, they ran big lumber trains, and I thought it was a main line as a kid because they ran 100 car trains with, you know, um, five, six, seven units on the front, sometimes mid train helpers. Um, it was a big operation. Uh, only in later years did I find out, as I learned more about the Southern Pacific prototype, that it was not actually the main line. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I got railroading in my blood, so to speak, as a result of that. And so then uh, it was in 1967 when I discovered Model Railroader magazine at a hobby shop. And then it just went from there. Oh. Déjame atrasar un poco. Let me translate, Joe. Well, eh, en 1967 fue el último que dijo en una tienda de hobby donde descubrió el, el ferromodelismo y, y de ahí sigue en adelante. Eh, de chico, eh, se me fue el estado donde me dijo que, que en, en, Oregon, Oregon, en Oregon, que vivía al lado de las líneas donde veía muchos eh, trenes de, de madera, ¿no? Era el, de, el, de login, sí. De login, sí. Y, y, y que para él pensaba que era el main line, o sea, no sabía que era, pues, bueno, una vía alterna, no era la vía principal, pero que pues, prácticamente nació al lado de la vía. Eh, Cisco Line, ¿verdad? Era la donde... Sí, sí. Así es, y ahí es, ahí es donde prácticamente empezó este amor, pero prácticamente es de las personas afortunadas que nace y tienes una vía muy cerca, en, en la Ciudad de México en especial es complicado, yo sé que en algunas zonas de Bajío y otras de México es, prácticamente sales y ahí está el tren, pero bueno, en la Ciudad de México es más complicado. Eh, la, la siguiente pregunta, eh, next question, eh, eh, ¿te parece que la haga yo? Le voy a apuntar de... Sí, de... Vamos a una llena, sí. Ok, next question, Joe. Eh, what is your favorite uh, well, I, I believe I know the answer, but it's okay. What is your favorite scheme in real life and in scale? I don't know if H O A N or C. What is your favorite scheme? So, by that you mean uh, my favorite paint scheme? Yeah. Prototype? Yeah. yeah okay. That's correct. Uh, obviously, it's the Southern Pacific. Uh, I love the gray and scarlet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also like the uh, Black Widow scheme. Mm -hmm. so they phased that out, I think, in 1955 was when the gray and scarlet was the, became the new paint scheme. But it took a, 10 years for the Black Widow scheme to completely disappear. I can remember as a kid in the 60s uh, seeing an occasional locomotive come through that still had a very dirty Black Widow paint scheme on it. Oh, oh, Black Widow was part from say, from South Pacific. Yes, same. yes, yes. Okay. It's a, it's a um, black, orange, and silver paint scheme, okay. and then okay. they have a day what I call daylight red paint stripe around the the bottom of the running boards. Okay, let me translate. Eh, le pregunté cuál era su esquema favorito eh, en la vida real y, y prototípico. Obviamente, Southern Pacific y en específico la parte de, es Black Widow, pero bueno, es viuda negra. Y, y nos estaba comentando que hay tres: es el naranja, orange, Black Widow. ¿Y cuál fue el tercero, este Martín? Perdón. Bueno, es la combinación de colores. La combinación, o sea, ¿verdad? La, la, la locomotora es negra y mm -hmm. tiene una línea naranja y una línea o un par de líneas es, eh, plateadas. O sea, es, es un muy bonito esquema. Muy bonito esquema. Y es único, o sea, es el, digamos, más, más diferente del clásico de Southern Pacific que, que se usó. O sea, en la, tra en la transición entre eh, Steam era diesel, es una de las primeras que, que tuvo. So if I can share my screen, I can show you a Black Widow. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that would be great. Eh, vamos a ver eh, un esquema del Black Widow que la tiene. Yo fui, ok. Go ahead, yo. ¿La tenés que invitar o por el... No, él ya él, hicimos la prueba. Le aparece ahí el share screen. Ahí está. Y yo ahorita yo lo voy a poner. There you go. Yeah. That's paint scheme. Uh, I believe Rapido uh, launched this scheme. Is that correct? Uh, Te pregunto well, que si Rapido lanzó, lanzó esta máquina. Se me hace un lobby. No, no sé. Right. Um, 
the the more um, modern game. That's the classic one. El típico, clásico. That's the classic wow. color that we all know. Right. With some weathering. <laughs> yes, beautiful. That's it. Sí, a, a algunos amigos en México les gusta este uh, Southern Pacific. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that in Mexico we have uh, many fans from this scheme, the gray one. Well, in, in my case, Joe, um, I, I model Union Pacific and obviously Southern Pacific with in the patchy version. <laughs> I have a few there. Um, I, I love I love the scheme and it's one after UP is one of the favorite schemes. Uh, is, uh, Southern Pacific. Yes. Um, eh, decía que yo eh, eh, cuando hago mis trenes de UP tengo algunos de ese esquema con el patch con el número de UP, o sea, el patch amarillo. Este, pero, pero bueno. Uh, Joe, my question for you now is, okay, about your layout. Obviously, we know that layout is, yeah, it's no more. <laughs> you, you move from your house and yeah, you decide to take it apart. But could, could you... Tell us a little about uh, the, the history of that layout, when, when you started, the design, the mushroom design, and anything you can tell about that beautiful layout. Okay, well, let me start in case people haven't seen some views of that layout. There was an article in Model Railroad Hobbyist magazine back in January. 2016, and I'm going to try to uh, bring that up for you. Okay, yo estoy comentando que va a poner unas fotos de su layout que apareció el 2016, January, yeah. enero 2016, en la revista, y bueno, ahorita las está buscando. Es uno de los layout más significativos de la era del modelismo porque fue el primero que utilizó, o por lo menos publicó sobre el diseño de hongo. El diseño de hongo es que uno puede construir un layout a dos niveles diferentes alrededor y gana mucho en espacio y la ilusión es como si fuera continuo. Es, es una obra de arte. Y, es, y ahí están las fotos. Ok, so here is the cover of the January 2016 magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was just before I decided to go ahead and replace the layout with a new version. So I am in the process of starting a new layout. So, and, I, and it's still gonna be the Southern Pacific Siski line. And mm -hmm. it's gonna use a modular approach this time. But okay. uh, let's jump ahead. So there is one of the scenes on the layout. It's a rock Be quarry. Beautiful scene. And let's see what else we've got there. Yeah, this is, I tried modeling different freelance things as a kid, uh, mm -hmm. but here's where the Southern Pacific Siskiyou line runs. Uh, yeah. My version has the Coos Bay branch come out of Roseburg. Mm -hmm. The actual Coos Bay branch comes out of Eugene and down here. So, but the branch was originally planned to come out of Coos Bay to Roseburg. And so, since Roseburg was a focal point on my layout, I thought I'm going to make, I'm going to do what they were originally planning. I will make the branch come into Roseburg. Mm. So that made it more interesting, made the layout more interesting to have the branch. The mushroom design, as you mentioned. Yes. Here's what a mushroom design looks like. Uh, it's got an upper deck and a lower deck, but the upper deck faces the other way and use a raised floor. You get a similar relative height from the floor for the layout then. So it's, it's sort of double decked, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Let me translate this. Eh, platicó un poco, bueno, está enseñando el, el, el archivo, el, la revista donde es, habla de su layout, eh, la parte de Oregon, la, cómo se, se inspiró, la parte que estaba comentando que hizo varios modelos eh, prototípicos uh, de, de niño. Ay, y en el recuadro está de donde está ubicado eh, esta línea, Siskiyou, y prácticamente nos estaba comentando de... Era Rosborough, la el Roswell, de Roswell, Coos Bay, esa es ah, el sí, branch sí. line, exacto. Y también nos explicó que ese es el tendido original, pero que iba de, desde la parte superior norte de Oregon también. O sea, el branch line se abría desde la parte norte. 
Así es. Y, y después nos mostró obviamente el diseño de Mushroom o el, el, el hongo, que en realidad el efecto es, es un double deck, pero cuando uno lo va siguiendo es como que es continuo, o sea, no ves el doble deck, porque está invertido y está elevado a su vez, es, es, muy, una, es muy inteligente, es a very smart design, ahí, ahí lo pueden ver, o sea, como la persona, o sea, en el mismo cuarto, como hay dos personas, pero uno no se ve al otro, porque está montado de una manera, por eso es la forma de hongo que hay, que hay muestra, es, es espectacular, es muy inteligente. Sobre todo es interesante porque muchos compañeros eh, solamente a veces hacemos una maqueta plana, y muchos Correcto. quieren añadir niveles y creo que esa puede ser una opción para las personas que lo puedan hacer. Eh, ok, Joe, eh, do you have more pictures? Le pregunto oh, más. Oh, oh, mira, aquí está. Eh, that's that's nice. This is the lower deck, which was the Cruz Bay branch. So sí. it came out of a helix down mm -hmm. along the back wall, then it'll turn back and through uh, Coquille into Cruz Bay Yard, Cruz Bay North Bend area right here so that was the lower branch lower mm -hmm. part of the mushroom yeah and then here's the upper branch it starts here in eugene comes through goshen cottage grove rice hill summit down through oakland sutherland across the bridge at winchester through roseburg then it went along a shelf here big lumber mill and dillard and then back into staging represented Medford. So you might want to go ahead and uh, talk about these two track sí. plans. Eh, bueno, si quieres, habla tú. La verdad, son dos obras de arte. Voy a... Yo, I'm going to translate. And, and also, again, I'm going to re, be repeating on this one because I watch all the DVD series. I, I understand this. Uh, I understood very good the, the way it works. Um, so... Uh, para, para que entiendan todos, o sea, ese, la foto que estamos viendo ahora o el plano que estamos viendo ahora es el nivel inferior, o sea, ese es el nivel que se vería en el hongo sin la plataforma para hacerlo fácil. Y, y bueno, arrancaba obviamente desde la parte de North Brand, que es una, una pequeña Coast Bay donde, es, donde se inicia el branch line o digamos cerca del mar, por decirlo de una manera, y sube todo alrededor hasta la Helix, que nos sube al segundo, al segundo nivel. Ahí está el helix, nos está indicando. Y así yo voy a bajar. Y ahí pueden ver el segundo nivel, que sería el que tiene la plataforma, donde el operador no ve el primer nivel, obviamente. Y ahí está la, la, la salida de la helix, Eugene, donde está el, el, el yard. Va todo alrededor, llega hasta Oakland y, y después vuelve donde tiene maderas, obviamente, muchas industrias, muy dinámico, muy, muy lindo de, de operar este layout. Um, Joe, uh, question for you. Why you decide to uh, rebuild this layout or change it? What, what was the, the, the motivations to, to take apart this beautiful thing? <laughs> well, uh, it's 26 years old when I made the decision to replace it. Um, yeah. At 26 years, Uh, a lot had advanced in the hobby. Uh, yeah, plus, my wife and I were talking about what we wanted to do as retirement approached, and uh, we really wanted to get some rural property. So we would need to sell this house. So to sell a house, the layout, you can't sell a house with a layout in the basement very well. Yeah. I know people who've tried, it's never really worked well. So mm -hmm. I told her, I said, well, really what's in the basement is dumpster fodder. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been talking about this Toma modular approach. Why don't we rip out the old layout and then I will take the space that we have here and I can start building a new layout. And since it's modular, when we finally relocate, then we can just take it with us. Yeah. Uh, the layout actually is not completely dismantled yet. And the, li the likely date at which we're going to move is probably somewhere around 2025. Okay. So I will continue finish, continue to finish dismantling the layout, and then I will. I am starting on the Toma version. I'm calling it Cisco Line Two. Yes. And then I can get as far as I can get on Cisco Line Two, and then when we finally move, I just take it with me. 
Ok, um, I'm translate. Um, ok, yo le pregunté por qué decidió desmantelar este layout y obviamente la respuesta es muy simple, porque se piensa mudar a una diferente casa, uh, creo que el año 2025. Entonces, lo que decidió es empezar a desmantelar el SysQ Line 1, como lo llama el original, y empezar a construir un layout en forma modular que lo llama SysQ Line 2 uh, para cuando se muda puede obviamente moverse con ese. Eh, también un comentario que quizás pasa más en los Estados Unidos que en Latinoamérica o quizás en Australia, que cuando uno vende la casa quizás quiera tratar de venderlo y con el layout incluido y no, no, no funciona. Eh, me sí. pasó a mí, bueno, me pasó a mí hace tres años cuando me mudé y quería venderlo con el layout incluido, pero no pude y al final terminé vendiendo el layout aparte para poder mudarme a mi nueva casa. Así que... Sí, y, y, y de hecho eso es muy, muy americano, venden muchas casas eh, sí. con layouts, pero no, no los paga la gente, entonces es otra de las razones, aquí vemos muchas fotos, y, sí. y, y por ahí mencionó la parte modular y toma, pero antes de entrar a eso, me gustaría preguntarle a Joe, ¿cómo se involucró en crear la revista? Digo, porque lo que estamos viendo es gracias a la revista. Sí, ¿me dejas hacerle una, sí, una sí, pregunta sí. antes que nos, nos vayamos? Ah, claro, de, claro, claro. De layout. Ah, Joe, um, there is a scene about your lay layout and, you know, how you, you make, you know, a lot of, uh, let's say, you, you, you were like a, or you are a teacher in the, in the model, and this layout was a good example of the evolution from DC to the CC. I, I remember very good a part when you explain a technique using little light, 12 volt lights to, to find a shortcut how to, you know, do the wire, wiring. So this layout was part of an evolution between DC and DCC, can I call you, call this. So could, could you explain um, why you decide to show, I say, obviously we understand why, but uh, where you started to think, okay, I can share this knowledge to more people. Why, why you decide to open to the world with these old techniques? Um, I've always been a teacher at heart. Okay. And uh, I also wanted to, first of all, it started actually in 2004 with uh, experimenting with digital video because mm -hmm. digital video was coming. And I thought, you know, I might be able to learn digital video, which was just, it was an interest of mine, and then maybe make some videos of what I'm doing on the hobby along the way. So, and since I love to teach, I thought this will be a way to kind of scratch that itch in a way yeah. where I could teach and show people because I love the hobby and love giving clinics and so on. So I, I thought, hey, I can do this. And then in 2009, we started Model World Hobbyist Magazine and yeah, just went there. So. Yeah, let me yeah. translate that. Yeah. Eh, Martín le preguntó, eh, ¿qué, lo llevó, ¿qué lo motivó? Que este layout era, era un gran ejemplo de cómo pasó DC a DCC eh, muchas técnicas como fueron evolucionando y, y le preguntó a yo qué lo motivó a, a compartir y nos comenta que en el 2006 en la era del video digital eh, le empezó a gustar a experimentar y él tiene en la sangre la parte de, de ser profesor ser teacher y, y dijo pues de aquí soy y, y así decidió en el 2009 empezar la, la revista eh, about, about the, the magazine 2009 Did you ever dream the evolution of the magazine? Because you start with a magazine, but today you have Master Train TV, you have the, the What's Need program every month. Uh, it's a big evolution. Did you plan this or just happen in the road? Let, let me translate. Le acabo de preguntar que si algún día se imaginó que iba a estar la MRH donde está hoy cuando empezó como una revista y el día de hoy pues, hay videos, hay YouTube, eh, Ken Patterson, muchas otras cosas. Eh, esa sería la, la, la pregunta. Ok, yo. Ok, so that, that, that's it. let's talk a little bit about Model Railroad Harvest Magazine. And it did start out as just the magazine. And then we added the store, Model Railroad Harvest Store, which lets people buy, uh, not only can you buy DVDs of the videos, which is really where we started. We started with DVDs yeah. back in 2004. Uh, but then we also made downloadable videos. Then we started doing ebooks, 
did the magazine, paperback books. Uh, and then later, which we'll get into, is Train Masters TV. Uh, and in 2016, we actually uh, incorporated it as MRH Media because it's all of these things. Okay. But let's talk about Model Railroad Hobbyists because, uh, as I mentioned, I started it in 2009. And it's interesting because when I started it, there was no such thing as an iPad, a tablet yet. Okay. But I noticed I made a post in 2000, late 2008. I said, there is a device coming. It will be about the size of a pad of paper. It'll cost about $300. And you'll be able to look at the magazine on this device. And I didn't know what to call it then. And the iPhone was invented in 2007. So it was only a little over a year old. Yeah. And I didn't realize how, I, how close my get would be just a couple of years later in 2010, the iPad was introduced. Wow. Eh, acabo de hablar un poco de la, de la evolución. I'm, I'm translating what you said. Eh, del, prácticamente el pasado 2009 y nos está comentando de, es la época alrededor cuando el iPad empieza a surgir. Eh, él él no, no, no la conocía pero como iPad. Realmente creo que el iPhone salió 2007, lo que estaba comentando. Y, y realmente, pues bueno, todo esto como que fue el... el Perfect timing, el tiempo perfecto de, de lanzamiento y, y, y un poco la evolución. En el slide anterior, primero nos mencionó que obviamente empezaron como una revista, después se fueron a la parte de DVDs, que era algo muy importante, y después lo de Master Train TV, y ahí surge lo que sería lo que es eh, Media Railroad, o sea, que es eh, todo el conjunto y es donde nos lleva ahorita en, en, en este siguiente es, slide. Es, es como el grupo se incorporó como fuera el grupo de media, digamos que es algo que, Así es. que abarca, es como una, un paraguas donde están todos los grupos. Y obviamente lo que dijo es lo, la de series dos DVDs en el 2004, creo que dijo, eh, que digamos eso es cuando empezaron a explorar o expandirse para, con estos videos de, de, de enseñar. Y le, le voy a preguntar un, un tema de su enseñar. Ah, Cómo ellos, eh, digamos, la manera que explican es muy didáctica. Um, Joe, one, one of the things is very nice from your videos and the people they, they help in the videos is the way you explain. Um, you know, when when you uh, the way I, I going to refer to you because you know I'm talking in first person with you now. Um, when you explain, for example, when you mix paint, you say one part part water, one part paint, one. But I say the way. Like I said, even for people like we don't speak a lot of English, or, or on that case, when, when I started, I didn't speak English at all like 15 years ago. Um, how easy was to, to uh, understand your instructions, the way you explain? The other, the other good example is about how you explain about operations. Your videos of operations really change. I see many people, I saw that here in, in Australia, where the people change the way to operate trains thanks to those DVDs. Ooh. So Good. again, I think that's where you say you are a teacher in, in your heart. <laughs> so that helps a lot. So yes, it's a reflection. Your work reflects how, how you express and how easy it is for us to, to understand. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, the information is useful and it's coming across. You know, that's why I do it is I, I love the hobby and I want to uh, help others enjoy the hobby as much as I enjoy it. So uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to mention too on Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, I got the idea early on to make it ad supported. Yeah. And since I didn't have to do paper or shipping or any of that sort of thing, uh, I thought, you know, I could probably just make this thing free. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. And, you know, so we've had the free Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine and it's 150 plus pages and we're up to issue 138 now. And, uh, you know, of course, it has ads in it, but uh, a lot of people tell us they consider the ads to be content because yeah. we only do train train stuff ads. We don't do ads for Hawaii vacations or razors or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, and there's probably over 25,000 pages now in the back issue library, and it's all free. Wow. Uh, eh, eh, this, eso es, perdón, es muy importante. Eh, lo, acaba de mencionar... Eh, 
25 mil páginas que la que tienen, que es gratis, van en la edición 138, pero algo que igual comenté creo al principio, los, los anunciantes de la revista, los que leemos la revista, los consideramos parte de la revista, o sea, porque no están anunciando otra cosa, sino es todo relacionado a trenes. Entonces, cuando incluso tú ves un tren, tú dices, ah, esta empresa hace esto, ah, yo necesitaba esto, y eso es algo muy, muy, muy bueno que otras revistas no tienen, que estás leyendo tu artículo y te meten un artículo de vacaciones o, o de otra cosa. Entonces, sí, creo es como, que eso es, es importante. Como, es como si fuera un buscador en uno, digamos. O sea, uno está viendo los artículos y tenés todo. Eh, y, y eso ayuda muchísimo porque es un ahorra tiempo. Y, bueno, obviamente, si estas personas recomiendan, en la revista uno sabe que puede comprar esos productos con tranquilidad. One of the things I like to tell people is that we are modelers ourselves. And so we see ourselves as modelers helping modelers. And so we're always on the lookout, as this says, for better ways to do the hobby. And then basically, MRH Media gives us a way to share what we find over the internet. So, yeah. so that's basically the heart of who, who we are. Eso es lo que dijo, es muy importante. O sea, sí. obviamente, ellos son modelistas y hacen esto para modelistas, o sea que realmente ellos es una manera de, de compartir el hobby, que en realidad es lo que siempre decimos, o sea, esto es un hobby para compartir, no es una competencia, y ellos utilizan este medio para distribuir esa información y que descubren. Sí, eh, ayer platicé un poco con Joe, eh, pre previo a esto, y, y le estaba diciendo que uno de los objetivos de, de este canal y, y el tuyo y, y todo es, es esto, ayu ayudarnos entre todos. Yo no me calificaría todavía como un modelista, eh, yo sería más bien un, un fanático, un fan o, o un tipo aprendiz compartiendo. Pero en el caso de yo, ellos sí son maestros realmente cuando ves su trabajo, eh, modelistas realmente certificados ayudando a otros modelistas. En México a veces es complicado los famosos eh, cuentas remaches o rivet counter. Siempre hay gente que más que ayudar te intimida y, y, y te aleja del hobby. Pero... Totalmente de acuerdo a lo que dice Joe, eh, modelers ayudando a otros modelers. Yo creo que ahí te la voy a discutir más adelante, no con Joe ahora, pero sí. somos todos modelistas y después están los maestros como yo. O sea, somos todos ah, modelistas. Eso es perfecto. That, perfect. Say it in English. Eh, eh, que lo diga en inglés. Sí. Um, we're discussing here with um, Eduardo because he, 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 he believes himself is not like a model, right? He's just learning. He's a learning person. And then in his head is then discovering the models and then the teachers or the master like you. And I say, no, we are all modelers. Then you have special people with special skills like, you know, masters like you, Joe, but everyone is a modeler. If basically, we are in the same level. Some people have more skills like, uh, and that's it. So yeah, Eduardo is no, he's no learner on the, we are learners. And I think all the masters, they continue learning. It's no, it's not stop, it's no end, it's no. You know, that's different from the way companies like Combat work these mm -hmm. days because Kombach, Kombach is a big, huge corporation now. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, lots of people working for them. And uh, when I last talked to Kombach, they told me they hired journalists and mm -hmm. teach modeling. This is a different so, approach. Different yeah. approach. Yeah, each, each approach works, but uh, this is the approach we like to use. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also yeah. want to mention running extra. Okay. Which is uh, a few years ago, we, you know, the number of pages we can put in Model Railroad Hobbyists, the ad supported magazine, is, is limited by how much advertising revenue we get. Mm -hmm. And advertising revenue actually has dropped off some since 2016. And so we started looking at what could we do because we kept getting really good submissions article submissions from people, but, it, you know, as the backlog grew, it's like we can't print these submissions fast enough. And so someone might submit something, it would be three or four years before it would appear in print. And that's just too long. So we thought, well, we, we can't do ad supported because we've already doing that. So how about we create another magazine actually make it an ebook with no ads and call it running extra, which is a model railroading, which is an actual re real railroading term, right? They have trains that run extra. So 
So we thought that would kind of get the idea across. And so, yeah, this is our, our additional monthly that we produce. And this one is not free. I could go to the next page. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's not free. It's but it's two dollars and ninety nine cents an issue, which is really cheap. So it has hundred so pages of extra stuff with no ads, and then as a convenience, we put the free model railroad hobbyist in the back. Oh, so basically, nice. one download gets you everything that we produce that month. Uh, it's, it's, it's very good. Like I say, two two ninety nine is like a cup of coffee, <laughs> like a, and you get all this information. It's it, it's a, it's amazing. Uh, yeah. Lo que nos explicaba ahí, Joe, sí. es like I say, they have a, eh, tienen una, mm -hmm. una una edición de que es paga que sale tres dólares por decirlo de alguna manera y y que es una versión más avanzada que se llama Running Extra, que es como una corrida extra, obviamente y es una versión de la revista sin, sin ads y con, como explican, digamos, algunas cosas más, digamos, de la versión original. O sea, la verdad que es una colaboración, tres dólares, y, y uno obtiene esta cantidad de material que es, es, es irrisorio, tres dólares por todo esto. Sí, y, 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 y sobre todo comentaba la parte de que salió un poco de, eh, creo 2016, bajaron un poco los, los ingresos y, y la economía, todo esto cambiado, mm. y, y salió como una nueva forma de financiar eh, con algo diferente eh, la parte de running extra o, o adicional, una corrida adicional y por un precio muy accesible. Y, y de hecho ahorita se me vino a la mente, eh, leí de unos problemas eh, que eh, por ahí publicó Scale Train de, del shipping y de los costos y todo esto. Sí. Quería preguntarle un poco de Joe, de cómo le ha afectado la parte, pues la economía, la economía mundial ha cambiado, eh, se ha afectado. ¿Cómo, la, ¿Cómo ha afectado los ingresos de la revista? ¿Cómo, cómo va? Eh, yo, uh, uh, when, when you talk about the, the 2016 that you have different income, uh, I remember that today, early today, I read something about scale trends that made a, a, a publish in, I believe, Facebook. They talk about the shipping costs. They talk about the problems they have in China. They have many issues due to COVID, due to pandemic. And... I was wondering how the economy is affecting the the magazine, the, the media company, not only the magazine, because we have uh, many people who lost a job, who only you know, reduce the income at the half, or, or simple, they don't have jobs. How how this affect to the to the to the okay. media company? Okay, I can tell you how it's affected us. One, one other note real quick is if you want to save even more, you can subscribe to Running Extra. And if you subscribe, it's like $29 and then you get all the back issues too. So wow. it's quite a good deal. So let's talk about how the uh, changes in the economy are affecting us. Oh, you, you were ready for this, for the question. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> sí, ya, no estaba planeado, le digo que ya lo tenía planeado la, la gráfica y todo. I'm looking at hobby vendors here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're the ones who care the most about this. But uh, at first, our sales tanked really bad. Uh, but our readership, as you can see, has gone up. Mm -hmm. Orange yeah. is previous year, blue is this year. So. Uh, basically, since uh, people are, you know, in lockdowns and having to stay home and, and uh, you know, working from home, all of those sort of things, they're looking for stuff to do from home. And yeah. so the end result is that compared to prior years, we're, our readership is significantly up. And yeah. sales have recovered as well. For about the first six months of the pandemic, we weren't having very much sales you know uh, we even had advertisers cancel mm -hmm. because they were all nervous everybody was yeah. uncertain yeah. what the mm -hmm. future held and so rather than spend their money they weren't going to spend their money so i had to lay off some people and and we had to make some changes cost cutting changes but that's all recovered now and so this is what our numbers are looking like now so it's 
It's doing real good. So there's your answer. Hey, congratulations. Hey, Al principio eh, hablamos Martín y yo de eso, de la economía y todo eso y del lockdown y decíamos que a los eh, que nos gusta el hobby no nos afecta, que siempre hay un proyecto o algo que hacer y esta gráfica que yo nos comparte enseña eso. El azul que ven arriba es las ventas de este año, el naranja es el, el previous, la de este, el azul es superior y Obviamente al principio, como decía él, le cancelaron eh, patrocinios, tuvo que despedir a algunas personas, pero después se recuperó y para bien o para mal, eh, la gente ha, se ha volcado en sus casas a la revista y, y bueno, parece que el futuro se ve bien. Yo creo que es el producto perfecto para el lockdown, o sea, no cabe duda que es, es como que... Es, obviamente, trabajando de casa, es todo en computadora, la distribución, no shipping, no contact, o sea, eh, te, te ayuda muchísimo y es fácil de adquirir y, y, y obviamente, económico también, ¿no? O sea, es, es. es un rendimiento perfecto. Ah, le voy a preguntar a Joe sobre cuánta gente trabaja y horas y todo eso. Sí. Um, Joe, uh, obviously, this is a massive effort, so, could you tell us how many people work on Uh, in, in the group, how many hours you spend? I, I guess it's the whole day. <laughs> um, yeah, some 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 numbers about you know the the big showing the you can show us the the big effort all the people uh, doing for this uh, my beautiful product. <laughs> uh, there are only two full time employees. Okay, my wife and me. <laughs> 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 my wife is very good. She, she runs the office. She does the shipping when people buy stuff. Um, she also is very good at pay stuff. So uh, she, you know, if we are producing magazine, the magazines and so on, she's the one that actually pays up everything in the pay up software. Uh, now, that said, we do have a number of part-time People. They work for us as contractors, mm -hmm. um, and so we have uh, three guys who work on the advertising side and the product side, and then I have uh, one other guy who does a lot of the online tech support, you know, keeps the websites going. Uh, people say, um, I can't log in, I need my password reset. Yeah sort of thing okay. uh, and then we have two copy editors and then we have uh, two guys that work on the news and uh, these are not all necessarily different people so for mm -hmm. instance the guy one of the guys that helps with the advertising helps with the tech support and helps with the product news is all one guy it's the same guy okay yeah. um And uh, then we have what I call um, columnists or, uh, you know, extended contributing editors, I guess the way to describe it. And they just write stuff for us now and then. And we also, and I would put Ken Patterson in that category as well, yeah. where um, Ken doesn't really write. <laughs> <laughs> He takes you know, so, no, something. <laughs> video. Yeah. And uh, we we provide the text. You know, he, he gives us enough information so that we know what we need to say, and then we'll write the text part. He's not really into doing text that much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then uh, somewhere along the line, 2012, Ken approached me about doing his column, What's Neat, and shooting some video. And then he got the idea to, uh, I think, uh, let me think here, around 2020 to do this weekly video podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's neat this week. So yeah. he had a neat show and then he decided to do what's neat this week. So that's just taken off. And mm -hmm. uh, we have a number of sponsors who sponsor that the YouTube stuff and uh hobby vendors who sponsor that so uh yeah it uh it's all working it's a small well. but efficient team yes all but, but it's, it's, too. Too. it's like 10 10 different people yeah. all 
old probably affiliated with it, but only two are full time. That's incredible. Let me translate is, uh, la primera parte. Eso me gustaría que sirviera de inspiración a muchas personas que nos ven, compartimos el hobby, que, que dicen, que piensan que las grandes corporaciones, este imperio mediático, me gusta llamarle así, ha sido por dos personas de tiempo completo, yo y su esposa. Después nos comentó que hay varias personas alrededor eh, que van y vienen, eh, ocho o diez personas, y a veces creo que son los mismos eh, en diferentes posiciones. Y, y habló, obviamente, de la parte de Ken Patterson, que se acercó con él en 2020, y la, la parte no solo del programa mensual, sino de su podcast. Pero lo, lo que a mí me, me quedo de lo que dice Joe es la determinación y el entusiasmo de dos personas han creado, en el buen sentido, un imperio del ferromodelismo o del sí. modelismo, que es algo admirable, ¿no? ¿Cómo ves, Martín? Sí, sí, no, impresionante. Bueno, primero que nada, disculpas que a veces se está poniendo más negro porque es una tormenta gigante acá y no, no pude ir a comprar la luz para reemplazarlo. No, um, así que le pido disculpas que cada vez me estoy poniendo más negro. Um, yo, yeah, I was saying, Joe, sorry because I apologize for the light in my room. Uh, it's a big storm this morning and uh, because I am locked down, I couldn't go and get a, a new light to, to replace it. So sorry for the the way I, I'm transmitting, like horrible. <laughs> um, Joe, obviously, you, you talk about this uh, in, in podcasts and uh, I, I, people we can understand English, we, we follow you, uh, about how the, your products are helping the new generations, okay, the, the youngster coming in the, in the model railroad. So how, how, how are you feeling is now the future of the, or how, how is your feeling about the future of the model railroad or, or the model is, um, model, modeler, sorry, in, in the future? How, how your magazine is getting to reaching these people, the new generations coming? Well, I think, number one, if you are going to reach the younger generation of the hobby today, you need to be on YouTube. Yeah, that's correct. Well, I, I look on YouTube. For instance, uh, if you go and start searching around on YouTube, you can find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos where these young guys are sharing their latest find that they got at a hobby shop or a swap meet or or something you know they got mm -hmm. on ebay whatever and uh you know it's it's not much above running trains on carpet level mm -hmm. quality but they're thrilled you know and there's hundreds and hundreds of those videos on youtube and so things like ken patterson's what's neat this week is extremely popular And I think we're reaching the next generation. I know, uh, I'll tell you a, a couple of stories. You want to translate what I've said so far before I get into the stories? Okay. Uh, yes, please. Uh, le, le pregunté a Joe como la, la revista, o no la revista, vamos a llamar, el, el grupo de media de él ayuda a las nuevas generaciones y que piensa sobre, obviamente, el futuro del modelismo. Y nos dice que, Hoy en día, si uno quiere alcanzar las nuevas generaciones, tiene que estar en YouTube. O sea, no hay opción sino en YouTube. Y que uno simplemente con, buscando en ese en YouTube encuentra técnicas, videos y como la evolución del modelismo, que ya no hay más trenes sobre la alfombra, simplemente si no hay cómo compartir, dónde encuentran nuevos modelos, eh, hobbies o hobby shops y toda la historia. Y esto va a yo. Okay, so this was really driven home to me. The YouTube thing was really driven home to me. Shortly after Ken started his What's Neat this week, mm -hmm. uh, I was at a train convention. I think it was Train Fest in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And I took my lunch break. And whenever we take our lunch break, we're, uh, it's a rule. You can't do lunch in, your, in the booth. You have to actually leave the booth and go, you know, Usually they have an area with tables and stuff. So, so I went and I got a sandwich. And there were these three young guys. They looked like 16, yeah. 17, 18 maybe that were sitting at the table. And they were admiring their stuff that they'd gotten here at uh, Train Fest. And so I walked up and I asked if I could sit down 
with them. They said, sure, fine. So I was listening to them and they were talking about, you know, ooh, this one's got really great grab irons and, and you know, look at this one's got the etched running boards, blah, blah, blah. And so I could tell that they understood the hobby. You know, they weren't just uh, kids getting stuff for a train set, right? They, they actually apparently knew something about the hobby. So I said, hey, can I ask you a question? They said, sure. And I pointed to my shirt, Emirates <laughs> logo, and I said, so MRH, have you heard of us? They go, oh yeah, Ken Patterson's What's Neat. Yeah. All three of them. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 I remember that I, I saw the video because you talk about this uh, this uh, uh, show with Ken in one of the programs. I, I saw the same, and I said, that's it. That's the impact of, of, of Ken. That's the impact of the media, of the video. And I, I just remember that, that I saw the, that video. Yes. And uh, another story is I had a, a young fellow. Uh, I say he was young to me. He's probably in his 30s. Uh, but he had some like two or three kids in tow, um, you know, six, eight, ten um, ages, somewhere in that range between six to ten. And so uh, he walked up and he says, I just want to thank you for Ken Patterson's What's Neat. He said, we, we watch that show every week and we're starting a layout and we are having a ball. <risa> el, no. impacto de, el impacto de los videos le está diciendo que le agradecían por el, el show de Ken Patterson, que lo ven y, y, y realmente es, es algo que llega a muchas personas lo, lo vemos con los ratings que tiene Ken that, sí. That, sí. Sí, total, totalmente Mira, le, le, voy, le voy a compartir la, la historia con mi hijo um, eh, Nicolás Joe, my, my son Nico uh, he's 16 and he, I, say, I started doing my live and watching your DVDs when I was 20, 24, and he was just born like a baby. And he, I think he watched the videos with me for five years. And then I sold your DVDs to a guy in Australia because, you know, very hard to get overseas your DVDs on that time. And yesterday when I was talking with him, I uh, said, look, tomorrow I have an interview with Joe, uh, Joe Fugate. And he, he didn't watch a lot, but he said, ah, the mushroom guy. <laughs> so <laughs> the mushroom guy, I was like, he remember like uh, between 10 years, he, he follows obviously Ken Patterson and everything, but he remembers you know characteristics of thanks to, to the videos and the media. And you know, it's, it's amazing. Like uh, that's you know the the connection you have through the models and, and, and it's amazing. That's you know I, it, it is amazing. It's, no no how how kids connect thanks to videos. Oh, it is. And uh, I'll tell you another story, too. Uh, I went to, I was invited as a guest to be uh, sort of the main speaker at a train meet in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So um, they paid my way, which was really nice. And I went and I made some presentations. I was sort of the local celebrity, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they did some some op sessions that night at various layouts. And so I wanted to go to one of the layouts. It was a, a, a larger home layout. And uh, so I went. And uh, when I walked in the door, here was this woman sitting here in the lounge, crew lounge. Found out later she was like the wife of the owner. Layout. As soon as I walked in the door, she goes, oh my God, it's him, the guy on the videos. <laughs> That's the impact that you have in many people. <laughs> Celebrities, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Be, 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 believe it or not, you're, you're a celebrity for for many of us because your videos and your work inspire to do what we do now, and okay. we learn from from all the from all the magazines, from all the videos, from all the programs, and when you can share something. With the people that create that stuff is is really nice. Let me translate this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Eh, le está diciendo que que realmente él es eh, parte de la celebridad del ferromodelismo. Eh, muchos crecieron con sus videos, con la revista y y aprendiendo de todo lo que él transmite. Entonces realmente cuando tú te lo encuentras o hablas con él, como es el caso de hoy, dices estoy hablando con la persona que me inspiró 
con la persona que yo vi un video. O sea, yo me sí. leí muchas series, me metí a muchas revistas y, y dices, lo poco o mucho que sé es gracias a la persona con la, la que estoy viendo en estos momentos. Entonces dije que quería compartir esto en, en español. No, uh, something, uh, le voy a contar algo también, una pequeña anécdota um, sobre la gente cuando, acá hubo una convención en Australia en el 2007, que fueron los 25 años de la NMRA, y vinieron celebridades del modelismo desde Estados Unidos, uh, y, y como fue realmente como una, una sensación, o sea, realmente el impacto que ellos tienen, especialmente de la gente de Norteamérica, en el modelismo internacional es impresionante. Así que le voy a contar eso. Joe, something like I experienced myself in 2007 in Sydney. We, we had the 25 years of the National Model Railroad Association. So a, a lot of people from the States came to Australia to you know, celebrate. So um, like Tony, like uh, uh, I, Joe, I know, Jules, I think it was the, he was the president of the NMRA in, in the US. And, That, that convention in Sydney was like 500 people like coming from all Australia and from New Zealand just to meet them because it's like a really celebrity is like a more like a I, I don't like that when you like, I call them masters of or inspirational people and, and really the way people from North America inspire the rest of the world you, you don't know you, I say this the, the dimension you have in, in the rest of the world is amazing. It, it is amazing. It, it's true, like I said. So, can we talk about the videos just for a bit? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so go ahead and turn on the screen share. So, you know, the store is where you get a lot of that stuff. And uh, one mm -hmm. of the great masters uh, whose videos I really love is Mike Confalone. He has some, some really great weathering videos that he's done for us. There's a couple of those. One is uh, rail cars, locomotives. And we do some prototype stuff as well. Um, and then these are really popular. We have five layout tours videos now. There's yeah. a couple. You might recognize him if you know anything about the hobby. It's George Salios. Yes, amazing. He's in one of them. And then another Mike Conflone where he does scenery. You know, you just look at that scenery. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a yeah. scene. That's amazing. The weather and everything. And then guess who? Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the mushroom guy. <laughs> the mushroom guy. There's, there's my <laughs> video series. That's still available uh, yeah. if you want to get it. And then yes. we also do ebooks and paperback books. And there's one on building a HO locomotive, steam locomotive from brass and styrene. And then uh, we also have a book on acrylic painting uh, on the MRH site. You can get this book for free. Mm. Or if you want a paperback, you can you can get it that way. And then I have my Run Like a Dream series, which I'm working on. The first two books are done. The Locomotives book should be out next summer. And uh, yeah, so so that's the other thing you can do is you can visit the store, and it's store.mrhmag.com. And then you mentioned Train Masters TV. Yes. So that we started that in 2013. And I think I talk a little bit about how it got started. Yeah, Barry Silverthorne came to me. He said, I had this idea for a TV show called Wheels on Steel. Mm -hmm. And I pitched it to the network execs. They weren't really all that keen on it. So he says, how about, he says, you're like one of the biggest digital publishers in the hobby. How about we do a, a model train TV channel called Train Masters TV? And so I said, hey, that's a great idea. Let's do it. So we have new segments that come out on Train Masters TV roughly weekly. Uh, we, it's, it's a paid thing, so there's no ads, really. Although we do have uh, some sponsor mentions. We do have vendor profiles and product demos, but uh, they're not really ads. I tell, I tell the vendors, I don't want an infomercial. I want you to show me some how-tos, okay? Yes. And we have all kinds of different segments on there. Um, prototype, layout tours, different uh, clinics where we have guests talk about how to do stuff. I have a couple of samples if you want to see them. Yeah. yeah. So okay. let's get this to work. On this edition of Train Masters TV, childhood memories down by the tracks. The train came at least once a day and we 
uh, or typically down by the tracks to watch it come in. It was a great playground. Modeler Miles Hale takes us back to the basement. Here we see the end result of all this preparation. The walls are smoothed together and the illusion of depth is impressive. Now that I've built the psych and painted the sky blue, it's time to add some details. And Streamliners on parade. It's a dream come true to see all these locomotives in one place. And in some cases, you're seeing locomotives that people have never seen before. <laughs> Beautiful. Es, es todo una, una, un abanico de opciones, DVDs, videos, revista, eh, papel. Creo que cualquiera que quiera involucrarse de más y aprender tiene que estar ahí, tiene que ver la revista y, y la verdad muy recomendable estar en Train Masters TV y, y es realmente increíble, o sea, yo repito, dos personas es la base de todo lo que están viendo, obviamente muchas colaboraciones, pero creo que es un buen punto para todos los que quieren eh, empezar o mejorar en el hobby. Y la, cal la calidad, la, la calidad. calidad de todo, sonido, imagen, eh, realmente hay mucho, mucho tiempo, mucho esfuerzo en esto, o sea, no... It's, it's incredible, it's incredible. Uh, Joe, we, we just said about the quality, the time, that, that we have different options, video, we have paper, we have uh, YouTube, Train Master TV, and all thanks to two people, uh, your wife and you. That's really amazing. Obviously, many people around you, but you are the, the, the foundation from all this uh, <laughs> media, Empire, I would like to say, hobby yeah. empire. It's yeah. it's really amazing, and thank you very much to to do this. Okay, uh, I want to show one other sample because in the era of the pandemic, it's harder to do studio segments where we have guests yeah. yes. on. So we're doing a lot more uh, what we call one-off uh, videos where it's just a, someone talking to the camera. Yeah. Okay. And so one of our latest new additions is uh, a segment we call Jimmy's Trainworks. Mm -hmm. And he gets into particularly a lot of technology stuff. So he talks about Arduinos. And in this particular sample, he's starting a new series where he's getting into 3D printing for the hobby. Mm -hmm. So let me play this sample here. Today, like I said, it's 3D printing. Now, first of all, what is 3D printing and how does it work? The basic way that 3D printers work is they use some sort of medium, whether it is a plastic or it is a resin, and they build models that are designed on a computer layer by layer until they have the completed object. Now, there's obviously some more complicated things that go with that, but that's the basics of how 3D printing works. Now, today we're going to be talking about the printers themselves and which ones and which types you should consider getting depending on your scale, depending on what you want to accomplish, these types of things. So let's go ahead and get into it. That's a great topic. We need an entire uh, show to talk about 3D. Yeah, 3D printer, yeah. 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 Yes, I think I think we do. We have a uh, we have a lot of things coming to Train Masters TV, too. We have a uh, this guy is electronics whiz, and he's doing a whole bunch of clinics for us. And then uh, this guy is a great scenery modeler, mm. uh, and uh, great modeler in general. And he's doing a bunch of new segments for us. Then uh, we do we are able to get it's it's harder now, but we are able to get an occasional layout. So I have Charlie Comstock, who is Bear Creek. People who have uh, been a reader with us for a while will know about this layout. I'm going to go visit Charlie. He's 40 minutes from me. Okay. And uh, we're shooting some footage of his latest scenery work. He's He's got a lot of new scenes on that layout. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, Déjame decirle una, una idea, Joel, a ver qué, qué le parece. Eh, sería a ver si estas personas se animan a, a, a hablar con nosotros e introducir los videos y después lo pueden bajar y ver de, de, de esta revista o del Train Master. Uh, Joel, I was thinking just quick outside, outside of the box. Maybe could be good, could be good if 
you connect us with these people, for example, Charlie, and he can talk with us one day when, I, when we uh, we can present the video in, into the Spanish talking people, and then that, that way we can connect people to to, to watch and download the, the videos uh, from Train Master. So could be good to, to create a connection and trying to bring close these people to, you know, with the translation in the middle. Sure, I think that would be great. It depends on the person. Jeff, I yeah. think would be great. Greg would be wonderful. Charlie, although he's a great modeler, he gets really nervous when he has to present, <laughs> even when he's online. And so it kind of depends on how how comfortable he feels. Then Rick Sutton, the guy who's doing this modeling, this is all mo models. Yeah. And uh, he's like, he, he takes photos and then he uses a cricket cutter to, to cut photo stuff and does photo lamination to create yeah. three effects and it's yeah. but rick is not comfortable at all being on a camera and he might struggle even being on a webcast so yeah 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 of, of course like i say uh, could, could we go like i say because i think there's a lot of material here uh people they, they don't have access because you know the, obviously the the language barrier when it's in part when you introduce somebody you know uh, and we notice that you know it's like a you know, this should should be you know everyone should in the hobby should watch this this video. So yeah, that's it. Uh, just an idea, and yeah, I think yeah. Eduardo with things like me, like we are happy to to do it. Of course, yeah, it, it just depends on the person. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Nice. That that no, that's great. Uh, I have a uh, another questions. Uh, Many people always talk about the the economy, about how expensive is the the hobby, and we we are looking for some something to share with the young people when they try to start. Uh, not always is the best option to to get the most expensive DCC sound uh, engine. Sometimes is is good to have. Uh, I don't know, perhaps uh, uh, all Atron, only DC, to to know all the how how it works, the engine, the lights, and then slowly evolutionate to the expensive, expensive the DC DCC tsunami four three Paragon four uh, over three hundred dollars. Uh, Hey, what is your advice for, for these people considering, well, they don't have an income, they are teenagers, uh, but they love the trains. What is the best option, like swap meetings, or what is your, your advice for, for these people? Uh, eBay is a good one. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of used, older used equipment sold on eBay. Um, one day I decided to just kind of do a search and decided I was going to try to find uh, a locomotive that was uh, somewhere in the $50 range. And I found dozens and dozens of locomotives on eBay. They were older equipment, used equipment. Uh, but hey, you know, uh, compared to a new locomotive, you get a new locomotive without sound, it's usually $125, $150. Um, you get one with sound, it's going to be $200 to $300 with sound. Uh, but, you know, 20, 50 bucks for a locomotive on eBay is great. And rolling stock, I decided I want to see how much rolling stock I can find for under 20 bucks and look around. Number one, AccuRail sells so kits new. For mm -hmm. under twenty dollars. Twenty, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And you know, I've found some cars from Acurail for twelve dollars, twelve to fifteen dollars. Uh, and of course, on eBay, you can find anything. You know, I've found stuff under ten bucks, under ten dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's older stuff, but uh, with a little bit of simple upgrades, like um, put KD couplers. Yeah. cars you know buy some buy some of that cheap stuff put some kd couplers on them put kd couplers on the locomotive 
and uh, you're good. Now, as far as DCC, you can get DCC starter systems, um, the NCE Power Cab and the Digitrack Zephyr are both good starter systems, yeah. and they're one hundred and fifty dollars. And uh, then you're then you'll be off and going. When people have a small layout, I've seen a suggestion that if you have one or two locomotives and a small layout, that you just do straight DC. That's true. Mm -hmm. straight dc but i will tell you if you move up to dcc now you have the ability to uh, tune your locomotives so that they run really nicely you can set the starting voltage you can set the mid voltage you can set the top speed you can put kickstart there's kickstart features and back emf features in the locomotives and you can really uh, get something that runs really nice. You know, okay. So. Let, let, let me translate that. Sure. Eh, le, le, le pregunto un poco la introducción de la economía. Eh, mucha gente dice que hay máquinas que son caras realmente, arriba de 200, 300 dólares. Y muchos jóvenes, adolescentes, eh, los teenagers, que quieren entrar. Así que, ¿cuál es la recomendación? Y, y nos da muy buenas. La primera es eBay. Eh, buscar... Mm -hmm que encontró una gran variedad de máquinas por menos de 50 dólares. La, la conversión, dependiendo de su país, pues, lo pueden hacer ustedes. Y, y algo que es cierto, menciona la marca Acurail para carros de carga, que incluso nuevos de Acurail los puedes conseguir por menos de 20 dólares. Yo por ahí compré unos y es cierto, pero incluso los llego a encontrar hasta 10 o 12 dólares. Esta es una pregunta que, que hacen muy, muy seguido en, en, en los videos de dónde los puedo comprar y que sean más barato. Entonces, creo que yo nos da una buena alternativa. Eh, eBay, máquinas de menos de 50 dólares usadas. Acurail, nuevos o, o usados, muy bien. Y de los kits para empezar, el que yo siempre recomiendo, NC Power Cap, y también el de Digitrax, eh, no me acuerdo cuál, pero hay un kit. El, de, el, Zephyr, el, el Zephyr. Es el DC-52 que antes pues, existía. Exacto. Esos dos kits son los que él recomienda para empezar. Y, y, y obviamente estaba diciendo que ya cuando entras a la parte de CC, te vas a dar cuenta que puedes modular la velocidad, la media, Exacto. la alta, luces, muchas otras cosas. Pero sí. nos quedamos con ese consejo. Se me hizo muy bueno para las personas que siempre preguntan. Y lo otro, lo que dijo también es el agregar detalles. O sea, el Exacto. pago viejo como uno agregando enganches nuevos y algunos detalles. Yeah. Um, también me gustaría decirle, Joe, uh, weathering too. Today, you know, just buy a few paints or if you can, a uh, uh, you know, a cheap airbrush and that changed everything. I say, just a little of weathering makes an older model fantastic. And, and that's give the time and the connection with, with the, the, the model railroad too. So it's, it's spend time with that old car and make it better. You know, it's, it's not, it's not difficult to say. And following, you know, the, the train master TV is examples and videos. Exactly. So you learn from them and then apply it to the car. <laughs> Así es, la, la última parte que mencionó Martín, el, un poco de desgaste o el weathering, ya, ya vimos las clases con Mike y, y, este, y, y ven que hay muchas técnicas, entonces eso agrega siempre detalles a, a máquina. Y es barato, y es barato. Y barato. Eh, ¿Algo más quisieras preguntar Martín, antes de cerrar, que, que, que traes en mente algo? Eh, no, no le voy, le voy a agradecer por, por realmente por todo lo que hace el esfuerzo y que realmente qué que bueno que que continúen y que vean que el, el modelismo tiene, tiene futuro. Um, Joe, just simple from me to, to end this video. Thank you very much for everything, really. Uh, your passion, your, your, your passion for the model real world, for teaching, for bring this fantastic world to everyone. And how, how again, you, you put this to the young generation like it's the future. Really, nobody wants to do the hobby to finish with us must continue in the time and really i, I really appreciate uh, what you're doing and ha happy to be there in your list of the mo uh, following your your videos and everything you do good i'm glad glad to help and uh, glad to hear that you guys find that uh, it's all useful yeah uh, something else would you like to add is something would you you would like to say joe you are free Uh, gee, that's a, that's a interesting. I, uh, I know that, um, I've had questions from people 
often they they talk about they ask about what's the future of the hobby look like in terms of uh, things ahead. I think uh, uh, if you look at the younger generation, the millennials, as they're sometimes called, um, that generation is actually larger in number than the baby boomers generation was. So we have, uh, you know, baby boomers and we had generation X, which was a small generation. And then now the millennials, they're larger than the baby boomers. And uh, I personally think that trains were a fad in the 1950s and 60s, a fad toy. And so they, they were more popular than normal during that time period. Uh, but if you look at uh, companies like Reuters, who uh, tracks different news trends and so on, uh, since 2005, Reuters has regularly had articles on train sets. And so just by a, a marketing 101 uh, example, what they'll tell you is the bigger the number of people, the more you'll sell because there's more people to buy, right? So if there's, uh, if the millennial generation is larger than the baby, baby, baby boomers, then, um, and I have also seen there's movements like the maker movement, which is let's unplug, let's build, let's do stuff with our hands. And uh, so parents are looking for toys for their kids uh, that involve doing things with your hands. And what better than trains? So sales of train sets are up. Uh, the maker movement means that model railroading is a great hobby for the kids to actually be doing stuff with their hands. So I think the future is brighter than ever for the hobby in terms of uh, uh, the trends. And you know, and like I said before, you can see stuff, see on YouTube that there's lots of kids on there that are fascinated with trains and they're making videos and posting them on YouTube. Totally agree. Eh, totalmente de acuerdo. Eh, lo que está compartiendo Joe, un poco de su visión del futuro, comenta que la generación de millennials y todo esto son, en números son más grandes que las que éramos de la X y Baby Boomers. Eh, los padres que quieren que sus hijos hagan algo eh, como más de movimientos con las manos, que hagan. Y, y yo que luego me la paso soldando y haciendo cosas, pues la verdad con los trenes tienes mucho que divertirte, muchas cosas que hacer con las manos, eh, muchas cosas de escenografía, eh, incluso eh, carpintería, este, electricidad, muy completo. Muy completo. Muy completo. Eh, y, y, y él ve bien, él ve bien el futuro. ¿no? Y la conexión con la electrónica y con lo, los apps y todo eso, porque el mundo de CC te abre esa dimensión de la electrónica que los, de esta generación les encanta. Hacer Gracias. apps manejar decoders, como decía el programar decoders, eh, todo eso ayuda a que la gente se conecte. Más también media y videos. O sea, a los chicos les gusta hacer videos en YouTube y compartir datos. Entonces, este es un hobby espectacular. Así es. Esperemos eh, compartir un poco de, de, de nuestros programas para que todas estas nuevas generaciones se, se inspiren. Yo sé que por ahí de repente nos han dejado varios comentarios, eh, eh, jóvenes menores de edad, que siempre nos, nos piden ayuda de dónde comprar, cómo le hago, y la verdad eso ayuda y, y pues bueno, es parte del objetivo de qué hacemos, ¿no? Eh, compartir el hobby y como lo dicen en inglés mucho, share the hobby, cuéntale a un amigo, todo esto, pues bueno, es, es, es parte de lo que hacemos. There's actually a video, you, can, you have to do some digging to find it, but there's a video on YouTube by a, a person from Yale, a professor, Uh, Yale fellow, whatever, okay. whatever. Uh, and uh, he says model trains is the ideal hobby because of the extent of, of what you, what the skill and the type of thinking that you have to do. It's the ideal hobby to prepare a youngster for our high tech, modern high tech world. Hmm. And, you know, you think about TPC, you think about uh, everything going on with Arduinos, And animation, you know, there's um, different, um, you know, robotics is a popular area. Well, there's a lot of robotics, animation, little servos, and yeah. Arduinos, and you know, all of this stuff. You can you can explore that to your heart's content with the hobby. And you know, thanks to things like cell phones and improvements in battery technology, uh, battery powered trains is right on the horizon. Then we've got things like 3D printing. Uh, 
you know, uh, modern LED technology. Uh, you know, you can create amazing lighting effects. Yeah. Your scenes yeah. and in your locomotives, and and uh, it just the list just goes on and on and on of all kinds of high tech things yeah. you can do model railroading. And and as this guy from Yale says, it makes model trains the perfect hobby for preparing youngsters for um, so you know to be a productive citizen in a high tech society. So. Yeah. And the other thing, Joe, very, very important too, is the connection with the his, history too. You know, they need to go and search. You know, I, I see in my son, he wants to weather a locomotive and go and look for pictures and the places and look, you know, how was the soil, the dirt, the environment. You know, it's, it's, it's super, super complete, super complete, this whole Así es, vamos a buscar ese video, comenté de un video de, de alguien, de un profesor de Yale, que comenta que el hobby es de los mejores para preparar a tus hijos, porque habla de muchas cosas, de, de la parte técnica, lo que sea Arduino, este, el futuro, y, oh, y es una herramienta básica, la robótica, yo, yo lo veo así, y, 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 y hay muchas facetas, como lo dije, hay el el ferromodelista que, que le gusta la escenografía, el que hace la, decoders, el que hace iluminación, el que hace casas, entonces es, es muy diverso. Sí, sí, sí. Y, y realmente muy bien. ¿Y cómo, cómo te conecta el mundo? Así es. Así es. ¿Cómo te conecta el mundo? Es muy, muy bueno. Another one is education circles. There's a lot of talk about this thing called STEM. S T E M. Mm -hmm. Science, technology, engineering, and math. And how important it is to uh, make sure that kids get a well balanced education uh, in those mm -hmm. subjects. Um, And, and we like to say add art artistic to that and call it steam s-t-e-a-m so mm -hmm. yeah that's uh and actually the the acronym steam is gaining traction in um scholarly educational circles where they're talking about how to teach the next generation so uh model railroading is great because it covers all of those areas and what better acronym for model trains than steam huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Sí, sí realmente la educación y tantas cosas que podemos hablar beneficios joe thank you very much this was a uh, very very nice day to share with you and we're going to share all with with many people who speak spanish and they're going to love it they're going to love the Master Train TV, the videos, everything. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, you're welcome. I'm thrilled that you guys thought enough to invite me. So thanks. Algo más Thank you. para despedirnos antes de él. No. Okay. So, see you. See you later, Joe. Okay. Entonces, okay. Pues muchas bien. gracias. Muy interesante. Realmente, eh, yo había conocido algo de, de su layout de la casa. Muy, muy, muy bonito y todo. Y, y me acordé de un meme que vi en la mañana. Eh, de cuenta, imagínate una foto del, del layout de Joe y mm. decía, si me hubiera imaginado cuánto costaba todo esto, hubiera escogido las drogas. Algo así. <risa> <risa> Lo hacían uh, en el buen sentido de que un buen layout lleva años, uh, tiempo y dinero. Sí, Entonces, eh, y, no, y nunca, nunca se termina. O sea, exacto. Realmente, ese layout, él dice que es viejo. Y, o sea, oh, dámelo a mí. <ríe> sí, como está, tiro. Sí, viejo, pero, nada, porque... para, para, como son de, de minuciosos nuestros amigos americanos, sí. decir que es viejo es perfecto para nosotros. En, en, sí, no, no, eh, no, es eh, increíble. Luego por ahí tenemos planeado. Eh, a lo mejor hacer algunos recorridos de algunas maquetas que hay en México y, y, y no sé si en Australia o algo, donde vamos a ver la, la diversidad. Hay, hay muy buenos trabajos, hay gente que, que lo dedica muy bien y, y lleva años y, 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 y esfuerzo. Entonces ya tendremos temas para, para, para largo. Eh, mm. Nada más quiero adelantar un poquito el siguiente ya nos pasamos un poco de, de nuestra hora, pero ya siempre es como... como siempre. <risa> nunca, nunca podemos, el, próximo, ¿no? el próximo programa va a estar eh, 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 alguien de Train World para todos los que siempre han tenido preguntas de dónde compro, cómo compro y, y por qué comprar, váyanse preparando va a estar muy bueno, va a estar con nosotros la gente de Train World y vamos a ver qué podemos eh, eh, hablar con ellos que, qué ofertas nos tienen, qué hay para el mercado latino, los envíos eh, los pagos 
Y por ahí, perdón, se quedó una pregunta al aire que decían algo de las captchas de la página del MRH. Yo también tuve problemas, es algo muy técnico, no se le quise preguntar a yo porque comentó que hay una persona del equipo especial que nos sí. ayuda. Ya después me contacto a Tocayo Calderón para comentarle esto, pero sí, yo algún día también tuve los mismos problemas, pero es ya muy técnico y, y preferí mejor no hacérsela yo y ya lo vamos a ver con alguien de, de sistemas que nos dijo que ahí lo apoya. Sí, sí, sí. No, no. Realmente muy bueno, también esperando la, la próxima con Train World para toda esta cantidad de, de acceso que tenemos hoy en día de lo sí. de comprar ciertas cosas ¿no? y para poner un poco un cable a tierra, ¿no? digamos, sí. con el vendedor. Sí, sí. Pero realmente ¿qué, qué privilegio, otra vez Eduardo, o sea, realmente lo que la, la gente que estamos eh, teniendo acceso gracias a este pequeño canal es, y compartiendo. La, este, sí, y, y sobre todo de gente que es muy, muy experta. Eh, sí, sí. Y, y la verdad siempre hemos encontrado buena recepción. Creo que... Eh, los que están en esto saben que el mercado grande es Estados Unidos y Europa, el sí. mercado económico, pero sí. no nos dejan afuera, sabemos que no, no tenemos el no. mismo poder adquisitivo, pero siempre están dispuestos a ayudar y, y desde Shane, que lo vieron en Scale Trends, a todos sí, realmente sí. se agradece y pues bueno, pues, pues buenos días allá, eh, Martín, prepárate pues bueno. si llega la tormenta, ¿no? Continúa en el lockdown. Sí, fíjate que no, sigue de oscuro y bueno. ¿Qué vas a bueno, no, no pude ir. Sabía que iba a tener este problema, que iba a comp necesitaba comprar una luz, pero no pude salir a comprarla. O sea, claro. feo, pero bueno. Sí, es igual así conseguí las mías. Pero sí. bueno, eh, gracias a los que nos, nos vieron este canal, eh, digo, este video se va a quedar grabado en, en los canales, ya también lo van a ver luego en el, en el de Martín. Mm. Cualquier comentario y todo, se los agradecemos y pues muchas gracias. Hasta luego, nos vemos en la próxima. Hasta luego. Uh -huh.